Hello students, just giving you a walkthrough of the first day of this activity on upwelling El Nino and coral reefs. This came from a magazine article that was sent to me by a professor at the University of Miami. She recommended that high school students could use it and it's a, it's a good introduction to some of these concepts and ideas and then it gets us into coral reefs. So we're going to go ahead and do this. The complete link for all of the stuff can be found here. I'll post this slides on your Schoology account. But I'm going to walk through this real quickly. Shouldn't take too long. This is just going to be part one on this video and then parts two and three will be on further videos in the folder on Schoology. So part one is just going to be on the lecture on the Gulf of Panama and the Gulf of Chiriqui, which I think I'm saying that correctly. These are two gulfs that are located in slightly different locations along the country of Panama. And I want to just kind of go through a couple of different things. You have a checklist here. This is what you need to do with this part, part one. You need to find the file named Student Activity Worksheets. You need to fill in table S1 as you listen to me kind of go through this stuff. And then you need to answer the pre-lab questions one and two. Show you where those are at real quickly. So underneath your Schoology folder, there will be a Student Activity Worksheets link. Yours will look a little different than mine, but it's essentially the same thing. So that's what it'll look like on yours. So open up that Student Activities Worksheets. Once you open that, this is the first page here. And this is the table that you're going to be filling in, table S1. And then you're going to be answering questions one and two. Okay. So get that stuff together. Get that uh, situated for yourself. You can hit pause here for a second. And then I'll start in like three seconds again. So get those materials all set up in front of you. Okay. Um, so first thing that you need to know is this Gulf of Cherokee. Um, the, the map location of this thing, I kind of wanted to give it a little bit better idea of where we're at here. So here is Panama at North and South America, and Panama is the little isthmus there, right? And um, Panama has a couple of different, I guess, pretty dynamic gulfs to it. And you'll understand shortly why they're dynamic. Gulf of Chiriqui is over here, and it's this kind of this whole flat ledge here. Now, to give you a context here, um, where is this? This Coiba Island is about... Uh, 20 miles offshore or so. So just giving you an idea that it's, we're not talking about a short distance here. These islands are, some of them are way out there, 50 miles, 60 miles offshore. But this set of islands and this little shelf, even though it's pretty deep there still, compared to what it we're used to, that little shelf is going to be known as the Gulf of Chiriqui. Okay. And then over here, Panama, this is going to be the Gulf of Panama over here. The two gulfs are different and because of the ocean shelves that occur, like this shelf, this deep trench right here, this is going to make things different for this gulf than this gulf. And what we talked about before was upwelling. And we talked about upwelling. We talked about the ability of bringing cold water up from deep water, um, uh, from deep locations. And that cold water is going to have oxygen, nutrients, et cetera. So let's talk about these two places here real quickly. Gulf of Cherokee is the one that was on the left-hand side of the map, and it is a, a, typically a non-welling or a non-upwelling area. So again, filling in your, your table there, this is what the information that you need to know. So it's a non-upwelling area typically. The water temp, as you can see on this graph here, is pretty much month to month. It's pretty warm. It's anywhere from 29 degrees to about 28 degrees. Uh, that would be somewhere around like 83 degrees to 88 degrees Fahrenheit if you're if you're kind of wondering about that about yeah about 83 or so 84. In El Nino years, which is a different part of the table here that you're filling in, in El Nino years it's about four degrees Celsius warmer, so it's even warmer than that. It pushes almost 90 degrees for that entire Gulf. Really, really warm water. It's got limited nutrients in it which means that there's not going to be a lot of food chain occurring. So the little tiny organisms, the plankton and things like that, the coral, they're not going to be uh, super, super healthy in these areas. But because of the limited nutrients, you're going to have clear water. During El Nino years, during El Nino events, there's even less nutrients available because that warm water, remember, caps that cold water that would typically come up. So during El Nino events, which would happen in like February, March, uh, January, somewhere in there, um, and, and into late uh, fall, early winter as well, November, December, the water can even get clearer than that.
So it's a popular destination for, for people to go and, and vacate. You can see like really super clear water here. You can see down in the water, probably 100, 150 feet. Uh, the, the water clarity is outstanding, but the nutrient loads aren't very high. So your fish populations aren't nearly as high as other places. It has a pretty small tidal range from the difference from high tide to low tide is about 10 feet or so, which is actually, you know, for us is pretty big, but for them is not a, as big of a deal. So from the, the average difference from the highest tide to the lowest tide is about 10 feet. At least that's what I could find. Okay. The Gulf of Panama, if you recall from the, from the, uh, the Google map thing here, remember Gulf of Panama is this big Gulf over here. Um, and to bring this back into this, the upwelling, it, it is an upwelling area. So it's typically got upwelling occurring. So it's got that cold water that's going to come up, bringing nutrients and things like that. So we'll talk about during a normal year, it's got upwelling going on. And notice that the water temperatures do vary quite a bit here. Um, during February and March, you can be down into maybe the 70 degree range for water temperatures, which is kind of, you know, that's chilly water for Minnesota even to go swimming in. And then in the in the summer months, it's it's up there at about 29 degrees Celsius, 28 degrees Celsius, about 84 degrees. So it varies quite a bit here. And that has to do with that upwelling event. It's nutrient rich because it upwells. The water is turbid. It's kind of cloudy. You can see that in this picture here that the, the coastlines of this area are definitely like a murkier kind of turquoise water. They're not super clear. So it, it's got more nutrients in it more plankton, more small fish, bigger food chain, et cetera. And it has kind of a small tidal range too, again. So not, not really something that's a big factor here. Now during El Nino, the upwelling stops because that warm water sits on top and upwelling stops. And then it's going to stay a consistent about 29 degrees Celsius, which is really, really warm, um, 85 degrees or so. If there's El Nino, again, that warm water sitting on top, no nutrients coming up. And it also clarifies the water. So the water gets really clear during El Nino years. Okay. So those are the pieces that you needed to know. I'm going to go back to that checklist. Make sure that you've uh, filled in S1 and then you answer pre-lab questions one and two. And that is it for part one of this activity.